Hey everyone, Pastor Shane here. And as many of you know, I write articles uh, for some Christian news outlets and also release them on my uh, website as well, which is Idleman Unplugged. I'm sorry, that's not my website. Um, my website is shaneidleman.com, where you can find it uh, you know, pretty easily there. The new article is an open letter to Donald Trump how you can heal our nation. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to read this. You can find the actual article on shaneidleman.com. Uh, and it's right there under articles. And the reason I want to read it is, um, so you can obviously gauge my tone, my expressions, uh, maybe, you know, hear my heart. It's a lot easier to understand where a person's coming from, versus just reading something online or, or texting. How, how often have we learned that lesson? And my hope in writing this is to, you know, I don't know if it'll ever reach him, but I believe that there is great hope right now uh, and how he can help. Uh, note the word or the quote, the air quotes here. Uh, he can help heal our nation uh, because there's a big crisis right now. And I don't think anybody, if you just watch this video all the way through, or if you're reading the article, read it all the way through. And if you're a Christian, uh, no matter what side of this debate you're on, we all should agree with the um, closing thoughts of this article, where this article is pointing us. And that's my hope, is that you can, that many Americans um, can understand how important this topic is, um, been praying about it, you know, putting it on radio or not, uh, I, I'm going to keep that in prayer. So if you are hearing this on radio later, uh, it's because uh, we decided to do that. So anyway, let me get started. An open letter to Trump. You can help, again, the word there, help heal our nation. So we're not putting it all on him because I do not believe that a person is our savior. We don't look to a man, but we are trying to shape a movement, uh, that movement being back to God. And um, I will share some of my thoughts as I go through this. Whether it's key evangelical leaders turning on Trump, the media's outright hatred for him, or the other extreme thinking that Trump is their savior, the divide is deep and damaging in our nation. I think we can all agree on that. One side asks the question, how can you vote for Trump based on his character and, and all the things that have transpired? While the other side responds, the spiritual direction of the country is the most important matter facing us. So here's where the commentary comes in that's not in the article. When people say that, what they mean by is you're appointing uh, a lot of solid Christians in positions of leadership from Mike Pompeo uh, to Pence to Ben Carson, uh, looking to Tony Perkins for um, you know advice and things like that. And some of my friends are on his, his team, his spiritual counseling team uh, from uh, Ronnie Floyd, and Jack Graham, I believe uh, Jim Garlow, Jack Hibbs, uh, I can't remember a few of the others there. And so you've got these people, you know, whether, you know, James Robinson, whether it leads to um, him making any changes, I don't know. But I'd rather have, you know, those who value Christian, Christian values and God's word of, uh, above somebody who is dressing, cross-dressing and heads our health department. I mean, just call me naive, but that's what the people mean. Okay, a person might not have the character that, that we're looking for, but the movement that they're shaping, what we are leaving for our grandkids, what we are leaving for our children, what we are creating even now is what really matters. So that's, that's where the debate is. Uh, and then, of course, they would add, I don't want to hear about someone's character when the other side thinks it's okay to kill a child even at nine months. Well, touche on that one. A flawed protector. Some have even used the following analogy to better illustrate their position with Trump. The head of a neighborhood watch program previously had an affair years ago, but he watched over the neighborhood diligently each night. He often stood against others on the committee who wanted to enact policies harmful to the neighborhood. He was occasionally gruff and impulsive, and sometimes his words were crass and offensive, but he did a good job during the late night watches. So, folks, here's our dilemma we find ourselves in, would you still want that type of person leading your neighborhood watch program, uh, leading your country? Uh, some say absolutely yes. Some say absolutely not. So where do we find, this is where we find ourselves. And again, you can find this article at shaneidleman.com. 
the word that can change the nation. The key, to, the key to uniting and healing our nation is found in a beautiful and profound and powerful word. You guys ready for this? This is the heart of it. This is where we all must come together. Now be warned, this word is not popular, but it is very powerful. It's frowned upon in corporate America, but it's highly esteemed in the court of God. This word can restore marriages. It can rebuild broken homes. It can lead people to repentance. This word can literally transform our nation from the inside out. It's the cure for the convicted and the way for the lost. And that word is humility. Did you catch that? That word is humility. Healing and hope will only come through humility. Humility puts God on our side. God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble, James 4, 6. I don't know if you realize how profound that is, but let that sink in, Christian. God is on the side of the humble, but he will resist a proud arrogant person. I believe even a Christian. James is writing to Christians there in the book of James. Uh, And so could it be that God is resisting America because of our pride? Absolutely. Explanation point. I'm hopeful, but I'm not naive. Granted, I'm not naive enough to believe that Donald Trump uh, could win over Hollywood and the media with humility and meekness. There is a clear, clear, crystal clear spiritual battle taking place in our nation as kingdoms are colliding. And I deal with this often on ShaneEidelman.com with all the articles and sermon clips and sermons and podcasts. That's one of my, uh, I believe one of my contributions is to help expose the the unfruitful works of darkness and what we as believers can do. Um, You know, but there, it's a clear spiritual battle. You know, kingdoms are colliding, but is it possible to bring healing to millions of Americans and their families Leadership can lead us in the right direction if led by humility. That is huge. So stop and simply look at the fruit that is being produced from the pride in our nation. Fruit reveals what seeds were planted. Fruit reveals what seeds are planted. Look at Matthew 7, 16. I believe Jesus basically said, by their fruits, you will know them. And the stench of our arrogant fruit has reached the nostrils of God. And that's where we find ourselves. Uh, that's the problem we find ourselves in right now. Meek, not weak leadership. I want to make sure you caught that. Meek, not weak leadership. We need leaders who lead by example, the biblical example. Humility is life altering. It changes a nation from the inside out. Imagine if millions of Americans confessed that they have been demeaning and bombastic and they want to fix that. Humility is not weakness, it's meekness. And meekness is strength under control. For example, uh, the, I believe it's the Venom 5 sports car is meek when it's idling in the driveway. But when the driver hits the gas full throttle, it generates 1,800, 1800 horsepower. My friends, that is strength under control. It is awesome and it is awe-inspiring. When the leader of the most powerful country in the world humbles himself, that too is awesome and awe-inspiring because it tilts the favor of God back in their direction, which is profound and so important. So again, you're not going to win over Hollywood, the media elites. It's, I mean, this is a spiritual battle. But I believe we can reach millions of good, God-fearing Americans caught in the middle of what's going on in our nation. You know, just think of this, the, 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 the shift, the huge, enormous shift, like earthquake level type of shift that could take place if Trump and many other Americans said something along these lines. Okay, you ready for this? I know some of you are going to want to go back and find this if you're listening to this um, possibly on radio. That would be at ShaneEidelman.com and my YouTube channel at Shane Eidelman YouTube. Uh, maybe ho- hoping to put this on my Rumble channel. I just just started as well. Uh, we don't know what's going to happen with some media platforms. The more you speak the truth, the less, the, the more they seem to want to silence you. So anyway, here we go. Can you imagine former President Trump saying something like this and millions of Americans? What I mean by millions of Americans is many people are angry, but they're not broken. They're upset, but they're not humble. And that will not get us anywhere. I think I read somewhere. Where did I read this? If my people 
who are called by my name, not Hollywood, not Washington, will humble themselves and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways. I will begin to heal their land. Well, Shane, that's out of context. No, it's not. Those four principles are profoundly important for us today. If you humble yourself, if you seek, if you pray like like our nation depends upon it, and if you turn from your wicked ways, that is an invitation for God to move profoundly and powerfully. So anyway, I'm, I'm off target here. Let me get back on track. Think of the shift that would take place if many Americans and uh, former President Trump went on record and said this. Over the years, I've learned a great deal. At times, my passion for change crossed the line and I became angry. The deception in America motivated me to tweet things that were degrading. I've called people names that I wish I could take back. Going forward, my commitment to America, the country I dearly love, is to work on my shortcomings. I'm not a perfect man, but I am a committed man, a man committed to our safety, security, and freedom. Going forward, I will seek to build up rather than tear down, but I will no way, in no way, capitulate to a system hell-bent on destroying us from the inside out. Pray that I can balance grace and and truth no matter where I serve, whether as a presidential candidate or as a businessman. So imagine the impact of millions of Americans saying, me too, me too, as deep humility heals many of our wounds and the wounds that have occurred in our nation. Words like this are not signs of weakness, folks. It takes a great deal of strength and inner fortitude to humble one's self. Therefore, humble yourself, 1 Peter 5, 6, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you when in due time. It's a process. It it, it takes a great amount of of fortitude to go and, and shape our nation, shape the character of people. The healing balm, as I wrote in a recent article, our only hope is a national awakening. I've said that many times. And that national awakening can only be birthed deep in the prayer closet. I sought the Lord and he heard me and he delivered me from all my fears, Psalm 34, 4. We must ask heaven to come to our rescue. And that begins with humility. Again, folks, I want you to really get this. Angry tirades won't get us anywhere, but bended knees will. America, what's it going to take to break you? Could it be that God is using much of this to humble us? Yes, he is. I truly believe that. We must turn completely. We must turn completely to God today. He is the shepherd of the shattered, shepherd of the shattered, the rebuilder of the broken, and the defender of the damaged. Let me say that again. It's so important. He is the shepherd of the shattered. He is the rebuilder of the broken, and he is the defender of the damaged. You will be amazed at what God does with the healing balm of humility. And so, again, that's the article I wrote, an open letter uh, to President Trump and what that looks like you know, going forward in our nation. Um, I know a lot of people are probably um, going to resist just because the name Trump or his picture, but folks, we've got to get beyond um, being polarized by certain things. Imagine the World War II, Red, uh, World War II generation living in our day with wokeness, doxing, the sexualization of kids, uh, gaslighting. I mean, it's just amazing. We've become really weak. Our wokeness has turned to weakness, and that's really what is happening in our nation. So anyway, hope this kind of special edition here of, of I guess we'll call it Idleman Unplugged, um, of you know, speaking into the, the issues facing our nation and how I believe there's so much division right now. But if, if Trump can just take that step of humility, get God on his side, and regardless of what happens in 2024, at least bring the healing balm of humility back into our nation again. And we can't rely on that. That could not happen. I don't know if you'll ever see this. Read that article at shaneidleman.com. Sorry, I'm just trying to really get that out there so people know where to find it. Um, I don't know, but I do know that it can start within the hearts of all of us. I can humble myself. I can read that and say, you know what, Lord, that's been me sometimes. I have let anger and unforgiveness and bitterness and being so upset at what's going on. I have allowed that to taint 
my judgment, and I have, a, I have allowed that to go beyond the boundaries of righteous indignation. Um, and I have where the Bible says, be angry, but do not sin. I've sinned in my angry, anger, and Lord, please forgive me. I want to be hu- humble. I want to be uh, meek, but I'm going to be very bold in this culture. I'm going to expose the unfruitful work, works of darkness, but Lord, I need your help. Can you imagine? Can you imagine if countless Christians said that, said those words, and meant it and prayed that? So anyway, I hope that helps. And uh, I will keep praying for our nation and contending, obviously, until the Lord uh, tells me to stop. And I hope you will as well. Thank you.